Dan, how are you doing today? I am doing good, S. Had a good weekend and ready to smash out another podcast. What awesome. are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk a bit about avoiding phishing scams. I know in the previous episode, we spoke a bit more about spotting the red flags in digital communication, and we covered everything from phishing to phishing and, and smishing. So I think um, let's chat a bit about about phishing today and avoiding those scams. It's super prevalent in the world of, of cybercrime. And I think uh, it will be good for the audience to understand how to actually avoid falling victim to phishing scams specifically. So maybe let's start at the beginning. Why do you think are phishing scams so prevalent as opposed to other forms of cybercrime? Yeah, cool. Yes. Um, I mean, research that's been done in the past, IBM you know, research has shown that over 95% of successful data breaches of companies are a result of some form of human error. And when they talk about human error, that's about mistakes that are made by employees in, in, in different companies. Um, that's employees falling for these social engineer scams and these phishing scams and and the rest of it and and in it, it's basically ended up where these cyber criminals and these hackers instead of spending hundreds of hours figuring out how to very sneakily hack through systems and into databases and onto servers and and hack their way through like we see in the movies they're not they're just convincing some human to hand over their credentials or, or do something that they shouldn't um through some form of social engineering and that's where phishing is so prevalent so we know that roughly only about 50 percent of small to mid-sized businesses have a cybersecurity plan in place meaning that you know their organizations and their employees are left vulnerable to phishing attacks and we know that even a larger number of, of small businesses don't train their employees around security awareness. So they don't have the tech in place to prevent it, and they don't have the awareness training in place for their employees to be able to spot it either. So it's really, really prevalent in, in small businesses um, and the larger businesses alike. But it's not just going after businesses. These hackers, these cyber criminal groups, these scam artists, they're casting a massive net as far and wide as they possibly can, not just against businesses, but also against individuals. So everybody's being caught up in it um, and they're trying to catch as, as many people as possible. So phishing emails are not just annoying clutter in your in your inbox. It's not just spam that we're getting from annoying marketing companies. Um, they're potential cyber grenades. Right, so they'll lure you into a false sense of security, and then bam, you've either handed over your personal details so that they can carry out identity theft against you, um, or you've handed over the keys to your accounts. Um, you know where you're giving over passwords so that they can get into really critical accounts of yours. Maybe that's email accounts, maybe that's social media, maybe that's even your banking accounts that you've handed over to these guys through through an email contact. Um, or there's a link you've clicked on um, that is inviting malware um, on your device. Um, so either three of those things really critical, and that's how serious you know these phishing attacks can be. Um, the emails can be like chameleons; they're blending in. They're trying to look like one of the good guys, someone you know, a company that you that you deal with on a regular basis. They'll mimic the style of legitimate companies. Sometimes even copying you know, the exact format of emails that you trust or that you know, with logos you know, from signatures you know, et cetera, et cetera. So their main goal is to trick you into thinking that they are the real deal. Um, it's about social engineering. Um, and more and more of these attacks are well-researched. They're looking at the information we're dealing with. They're going onto social media. They see who we are shopping with, who we're banking with, who we're talking about, what companies we're interacting with, maybe on LinkedIn. They're looking at our company, who we are. They're researching people that we work with. There's so much information available online that these scammers are putting together these really elaborate uh, fake attacks or the, these fake sort of social attacks on us to try and convince us that they are um, who they say they are, so they can get us to start handing over information and, and doing shit that we really shouldn't. So, you know, all the information is out there available for them. And, you know, with the introduction of AI now into the into the cyber criminal world, that level of research and that level of, of, of convincingness 
don't think that's a that's word, but we'll use it anyway, is going to become even more prevalent, even more hectic now that we're going to see because they're going to be able to produce stuff that you know will we would normally require hours of research by these scammers, and they're going to be able to do this really, really quickly using AI. So we're, we're going to be coming across emails and and phishing scams that are going to be more um, convincing uh, than ever before. It's something we have to be aware of. Yeah, Dan, that's super scary. The stats that you mentioned, Dan, obviously the amount of research and information that's accessible by these uh, cyber criminals is, is super scary. Um, and yeah, I think the next the next thing is obviously we, <laughs> and we use this analogy, we both love coffee and I, I think majority of the people listening all love coffee. So um, a little an analogy here, why, why is avoiding phishing scams more important than your morning coffee? Well, falling for a phishing scam, mate, um, that's opening that's opening it up to your digital identity. You fall for a, for a decent phishing scam, and they get in. They 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 get your your personal ID and set up scams against you. There, they they get into your finances or they get into your privacy. Um, you know, your day is going to end up a hell of a lot worse than just missing a cup of coffee in the morning. So one wrong click, one long wrong, you know handing over of information onto the wrong site um you know you, you're you're in for a really really shitty day um and i don't think coffee's going to help you out of that one mate and um with that being said dan how do we how do we ensure we stay one step ahead of cyber criminals in the fishing game okay cool so you know, security awareness is everything. It's it's you know we we're in the awareness game. We're trying to educate. We're trying to raise awareness. Um, we want to change behavior. You know, the behavior we're talking about today is avoiding phishing scams. So, you know, people need to be aware that the scams are out there. That they need to be aware that everything coming into their mailbox, everything coming into their message list on their phone, everything coming into their DMs on social media, is is not all legit it's not all friendly there's a lot of shit out there um, on the internet and people are getting hurt by it and and seeing huge impact and damage from it so first things first is be aware of it you know understand that this is a major problem understand that you could be a victim so many people are like bloody ostriches and they'll stick their head in the sand and they'll go no i'm not a celebrity or no i'm not a big business i'm a small little little one man business no one wants to scam me i don't have a lot of money they don't care they don't care who you are they don't even know who you are they're sending out this massive net of of phishing attacks and it's going out to millions of people and they're catching as many victims as they possibly can so that you may not be targeted but you're still going to get hooked up in it for sure um see what i did there with the <laughs> with the hook um okay so next ne next on the list you know really how to avoid how to avoid phishing scams is look but don't touch if you get an email into your mailbox and there's an attachment on there or there's a link on there, don't just go rushing in and opening attachments. Don't just go clicking on shit, you know, without actually stopping and thinking about it. Um, so look, but don't touch. Identify that there are these elements in your, in your phishing emails. Have a really good look first. Look for all those indicators that we spoke about in the last podcast. Look for those red flags. Is this a suspicious email? You know, Make sure that you're not walking blindfolded into traffic by just clicking on, on this stuff randomly. Be very, very sure about the email. Be sure about the sender. Be sure about everything about that email before you start firing your bloody mouse over and clicking on, on links in an email or start opening an attachment. So you know, any time that that email comes in and it's got an attachment or a link, a little alarm bell should go off and go, let me just make sure here before I click on anything. So look, but don't touch. First, first rule there. Um, Second is check out the sender. You've received an email that's setting off, you know, your spidey senses, something not looking right about it. Have a look first at the sender's email address. Um, you know, it can be from one of the big brands. It could come from your PayPal. There could, there, there could be a, a small change in, in the in the typeset there. There could be something something putting you off about the font. There could be a little dash in there that, that you haven't noticed before. So a lot of these... A lot of these uh, these groups, a lot of these cyber criminals, a lot of these scammers, they'll go and purchase legit domains. They'll purchase a domain that looks like 
Google or it looks like Facebook or it looks like PayPal or it looks like some online retailer, but it's got a small little underscore in it or it's got a small space in it or it's got a, a you know a, a number in it maybe instead of a, a, in, instead of a an O. So they are getting around email systems because they're purchasing actual domains that they're then using and they're then creating email accounts using these domains and then they're scamming people that way. So have a really good look at the sender. You know, if it's coming from your bank, if it's coming from your company, if it's coming from, you know, a social media site or or one of your online shopping sites, you should know what that domain is and where they normally send emails from and have a look at that. And if it isn't exactly, you know, you're onto something there and you should investigate further. So next up is don't get hooked by urgency. Um, we've spoken about it previously, but social engineers, they're all about manipulating human psychology. They are about playing on different elements of our psychology. So we act as quick as possible, or we act without thinking. They want us to do things. They want us to hand over personal information. They want us they want us to hand over data. They want us to give over passwords. They want us to click on links. So they want us to do actions that we normally wouldn't, that we would hesitate, that we'd slow down, we'd take a breath, we'd think about what we're doing first. But if they introduce a bit of urgency or they introduce uh, some scare tactics or they introduce a bit of family drama or whatever it is, they'll play on some, some element of our psychology so that we stop thinking rationally and we launch into this without thinking about it. So don't get hooked on urgency. They'll love to play the urgency game. They want you to panic, click without thinking. Um, if you've got an email screaming at about account suspension or an unauthorized login or finances, you know, your account's been emptied, just calm down, take a breath and verify stuff through legit channels before you actually do anything. Um, next is beware of personal info requests. Very few companies legit organizations out there are going to be asking you for sensitive personal information. I, you know, I'm not talking about your first name and last name. I'm not talking about your phone number. I'm not talking about your email address. That shit is everywhere. It's, you know, if you think, if you think you're going to protect that, you know, good luck to you, but no organization will ever ask you for your password. Absolutely. No one ever will, will ask you to send you their password or, or, or transfer a password or ask you f by an email, you know, what your one-time pin is or, or anything like that. So there's very, very sensitive information that you shouldn't be handing over, you know, ID documents, um, ID numbers, social security numbers, national insurance numbers, that, that sort of stuff is very, very personal, inf personal information that can be used for identity theft. So don't hand that over. And if somebody's asking for that type of information, if they're asking for credit card details, if they're asking for passwords, if they're asking for any of that key ID stuff, um, it should ring alarm bells, um, close it down, investigate further um, and, and move on. So, Last from last from the end there, we've got you know unusual requests from usual contacts. Sometimes our contacts may have their email accounts breached, or their phone could be stolen, or they could have a SIM swap fraud on them. So a lot of the time we may receive messages from contacts, okay? Or the scammers have done their research on LinkedIn or they've done their research on Instagram or on Facebook and they'll see who our contacts are. They'll see who our friends are. They'll see who our family is. It's really, really easy to do that. In five minutes, you can build an entire family tree of, of some target on social media. In five minutes, you can build an entire tree of who this person works with just by looking at their LinkedIn account. It's really, really easy. And then I can send them emails from their boss or their secretary or their colleague at work. And so you could receive emails. Maybe it's not from you know an email account that you recognize, but it's from that person. And it's got a signature from that person, from the company that they work with. You know, don't immediately assume that that is legit. If they're asking for something funny, if they're asking for some information that's a bit sensitive, if they're asking you to do something that's out of the ordinary, it's an unusual request. Again, a red flag should come up about that. And get on the phone, contact that person, phone them up, 
by different means. Don't just reply to the email like an idiot because you could be emailing, you know, the scammers. So message this person, get on the phone with them, go and walk to them in the office and say, listen, did you just send me this? You know, what the hell are you talking about? So unusual quests from usual contacts is something that we, we need to be aware of. And then finally, when in doubt, shout it out, okay? Or, or scream to IT. If anything is raising alarm bells, in your personal life, with your personal accounts, get on the phone to the bank. Go to the bank's legit website. If anything's screaming alarm bells on your social media, you know, contact that company through their legit messaging system um, about any, any problem you've got. Same with your emails. Um, any of the, the big organizations will have support teams available to be able to help you and answer any questions, shut anything down, secure your system if they need to. And then if in your in the business environment, if you're at work, get onto your manager, report something as quick as possible, or phone IT. Um, and the guys there are going to jump to it. They'll be able to answer any questions you've got. They'll be able to investigate any issues that you've got and lock that down and protect the rest of the organization. So reporting the stuff is, is massive. Um, and that's a very quick run through, S, of, of how to avoid phishing scams, how to stay safe if these things are ending up in your mailbox, right? Yeah, 100%, Dan. I think the fact that we're revisiting phishing scams over a number of episodes just shows the audience that the sheer threat it poses to not only organizations but individuals as well is super alarming i know we we mentioned the uh the red flags in the previous episode and now we're going through how to how to avoid it so yeah i think those two were, were really good um and yeah it's super important to to think before you click really um and that's everything from my side dan thanks for your time and i'll catch you in the next one Cheers, Ace. Have a good one, mate.